Hey, this is Mr. Morrison, and today we're going to talk about surface area of prisms and cylinders. And if volume is what fills up an object, surface area is like if you painted the outside of it, how much paint it would take. So there's a couple ways to do this. The first way I'm going to show you is kind of what I think is the easier way. It's kind of just break apart the shape piece by piece. And looking at this prism, this cube, you can see there is a top and a bottom, a front and a back, a left and a right. So if you found the surface areas individually of each shape, you could then take them out them up for the overall surface area. So this is, again, kind of broken up, and they made a formula out of it. So they took the top length times width, the bottom length times width, and came up with this 2LW. Same thing for the front and the back, the left and the right. So you could use this formula if you wanted to, the two parentheses LW plus HL plus HW, or you could kind of just take it apart piece by piece. So looking at this shape, this rectangular prism, first we're going to look at the front and the back. So the front of it is 2 times 3, which takes care of the front part of it and the back would be the same thing, so we times by 2 because there's two of them and get 12. Then we could take a look at the left and the right side of it. So again, there are two of those, so the right side would be 6 times 2, which would give you 12, and then times that by 2 to get 24. So now we have the front, the back, the left, the right. Now we just need the top and the bottom. So the top and the bottom of this shape would be 6 here and 3 here. So it would be 6 times 3, which would give you 18. And again, there are two of those, so that would give you 36. Now to find the overall, we would have to take all three of these and add them up. So it would be 36 plus 12 plus 24 would equal 72. And it's in feet, so make sure to label it. It would be feet squared. So the surface area of this figure would end up being 72 feet squared. Another way to look at this, um, and the book shows you this way, is, and this might be more confusing, but a prism, the surface area S of a prism is twice the base, the base being the bottom piece again, and the lateral surface area. The lateral surface area is if you unravel it, the bases are the top and the bottom, so the lateral is everything in the middle. Or you can use this other formula that I showed you before. So using this formula, if you see the perimeter of this thing, uh, it's the two and the three, so it'd be two, three, two, three. So the perimeter really makes the length of the rectangle once you unravel it. You can also use this formula. So using it this way, we would look at the base of this thing. Uh, again, it's a big B, so we have to figure it out. So the surface area of the base, um, if you want to look at the top and the bottom, would be 3 times 6, which will give us 18. So that would be two of those, so the bases would be 36. So that takes care of this 2B piece up here. Then the perimeter of it, if 3 times 6 is the base of it, the actual base, it'd be perimeter, would be 6 and 6 on this side, 3 and 3, so it'd be 6 plus 6 plus 3 plus Three, so the perimeter will give you 12, 18. And then the perimeter times the height of it, it's 2, will give you 36. So plugging that in, this side of it, the perimeter times the height would be 36, which will give you 72, which is the same thing that we got over here, and make sure to label it. So you can see there are more ways to do it than one. Um, for the actual cylinders, you want to find the base of it, which is a circle. So we use a formula 2 pi r, which is nothing new. And then if you actually take um, the circumference of this, the circumference happens to be the same thing as the height of the lateral. So you can see here in this little diagram, the circumference 2 pi r, if you unravel, it will give you the actual length 
of the lateral surface area. So just plugging everything in, you can really just use this as a formula. It'd be 2. Oh, I didn't want that equal sign there. 2 pi, the radius is 3 squared. So that takes care of two circles. Then for the lateral surface area, it'd be 2 pi, the radius is 3, height is 5. So then if we just plug everything into our calculators, first we do the exponents. So it'd be 3 times 3, which is 9 times 3.14 times 2. So over here, 56.52 represents the bottom and the top circles area. And then over um, for the lateral surface area, it'd be 2 times 3.14 times the radius 3 times the height 5 to get 94.2. Then we just add those two pieces together to get 150.2. 7, 2 inches square because it is surface area. So this is more formula based. And then you might have different shapes. So um, there's not really formula for this one. You have to take it apart piece by piece. So I would first do the two triangles. So they would be 3 times 4 times a half. So that's 6. So this triangle and also this triangle there's two of them, would be 12. And then I'll just break apart the other pieces. So down here, this rectangle, be four this way, eight this way. So four times eight equals 32. That takes care of that one. And then you'd also have to do the other rectangles. So this back one, oops, the right and red. This back rectangle would be 3 high, and this 8 will carry over here, so that would be 3 times 8, which is 24. So then you just have this top one left, I'm starting to run out of colors here, which would be in pink up there, so that would be 8 times 5, which would be... 40. Then you just have to take all these and add them together. So it'd be 12 plus 32 plus 24 plus 40. So this would end up being 108 inches squared. So the easiest way I think to do all these is really just to take part piece by piece, shape by shape, and then add up all your pieces together. If you could, please answer the questions one two and three on the Google form on your right. These pictures are also at the bottom of the page so you can see them for a little bit longer. Good luck.